You can also set the fill type to be a bevel, and a bevel creates like an edge around your image here, and there's a highlight color and a shadow color. Let's set our highlight color to be red, and our shadow color to be uh, black. And what you'll see now is as we increase the size of the bevel, you'll see that black edge start to appear around the edge of the, the image there. And uh, that, you know, it's, it's creating a 3D, a simulated 3D effect there. So you can control a variety of things. You can control the highlight opacity. So if we back the highlight opacity off the image, it becomes somewhat transparent. Or the shadow opacity to make that a little bit softer. We can adjust the balance, which is sort of like the depth of the bevel. So to create more of a, a, a sharper edge bevel, you can also light it. If you turn on lighting there, that will add a, basically a lighting effect. Here, let's go with a, a little bit milder color there in the middle so it's a little bit easier to see there. So you see the, the lighting effect when we turn that on. Let's uh, adjust the light magnitude and increase that there. You see that it's adding a highlight to the edge of the bevel there. You can see it really well in the O there. And we can also adjust the light angle so we can move that around. And you see, you know, as you change that, the angle of the light, you're creating a very different shape look bevel. Anyway, it's a simulated 3D effect. Uh, I've got my, the balance way too high there. So anyway, uh, you can adjust these things in a variety of ways. You can turn on a tube, which creates a different shape of the, the bevel, basically creates a little bit of a lip there. And all of these are options under the bevel category. The other two here aren't useful until we turn on some of the uh, the other elements like the shadow or the strokes. Let's start by adding a stroke. I'm going to add an outer stroke, which is basically going to add a black line around the edges of the letters there, right? And we can control the, the size of it. You can turn whether you want it to be an edge or want it to look like it has depth, right? So it's basically creating like a shadow effect there uh, or what's called a drop face where it's actually just right behind the image. And uh, you would only see it then if it's bigger, right? So if I increase the magnitude there, you see that effect. Anyway, all of these are basically different versions of this stroke effect. And of course, the, the stroke itself can be a solid, a gradient, a bevel, a, a eliminate, you know, hidden, or a ghost, and so forth. So you have you know, just so many options here. You can add a sheen and a texture to the stroke. And the stroke itself can be, you can have more than one stroke. So for example, here, let's add now an inner stroke. And let's add an inner stroke that is red. So I'm going to add, just make that red. And now we've got a red inner stroke and our black outer stroke. And now I'm going to add another inner stroke. Add again. And now you see I have two inner strokes. The second one here, let's make this one green. I'm just doing this to make it yellow so you can really see what we're doing here. I'm adding a second inner stroke. And this one now, you see the red and then the yellow. And the red is coming before the yellow, but if I want to rearrange the order, I can make the yellow move up, and then you'll see now you get the red over the yellow, right? If it's controlling the order of them. In fact, let's make it a little bit thicker here. So now the yellow is nice and thick, and we can swap the order of those so you can see whether the red is outside the yellow or the yellow is outside the red, right? By controlling those inner strokes, and same with outer strokes. And then in addition to all these strokes, we can also add a shadow. And the shadow creates here, let's turn off the strokes here, just so that we don't see those. Uh, I'm just gonna turn those off there. And now we just have our fill type, that pale, pale red color, and then the shadow being added. And the shadow, of course, can have its own color and opacity and angle and distance, and you, know, you can move the shadow farther away. All these settings for that shadow effect. And all of these are compounded. So, you know, and this is, so we've got the shadow. Now we can go to that fill type and set that to eliminate. And now basically the image itself is invisible. The face is invisible, but we can still see that outer stroke. I'll turn that one off. And now all we have is the shadow. So we get basically hollow letters, but with a shadow. And all of these combined to make, you know, a, a tremendous amount of versatility for your images. And finally, I'm just going to cover the background. You can create a background for your title image. So remember, this is, this is just a big text object that's going to be a clip in the timeline and if you want that clip to have a background that clip can be a gradient so we can add a background gradient uh, let's just create that to be a little white to black gradient and so now our this text object actually has a solid background or of course we could control the opacity of that so now there is our text object that has that, that you know, a, a transparent white area and a solid black area behind our letters. Let's go ahead and save that by closing the window. And then you'll see here is our sample clip. 
And depending on what it's over, you'll see the background there transparent or just black and so forth. So you really have just an unbelievable amount of control to customize the way your titles look.